Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is David. Uh, I'm, work f I'm working for Novoda. Uh, we just moved here from London. I have a new office here in Berlin. And first of all, it's sorry to everyone because there was a talk about from Ronan uh, Swartz about Android NDKs um, something else, but he has kind of a misunderstanding with the agenda. So that was a nice talk. Now you're stuck with me. But I hope you're interested in it. Um, this talk is about we released the Arte app a week ago. Um, we were deciding when we started to think about the app, we said, what's the build system we're going to use? Do we want to go with Maven? Do we want to go, uh, it was great, that was, that was three and a half months ago. And we said, do we want to use Gradle now? Is it ready? Is it not? So we did go for Gradle. And what I'm going to explain to you about is all these things that we found and the problems that we are run into uh, when starting to develop the app. But first of all, I want, this, is, this is my hometown. So I'm from, I'm from Spain. Uh, this is a Roman uh, building in, in Tarragona, which is my hometown, which is really far away from here. Uh, so I started developing Android there for four and a half years ago. Uh, no one was using Android or anything similar in, in Spain. So uh, I was working for a small company in Tarragona for one year. We just did crappy apps that no one used. But it was fun. It was how I started to use uh, learn Android. Then I moved to Madrid, which is this place where everyone is complaining about politics and they have no jobs and no money. Uh, I was working for a company named Blink Booking, which is last minute hotel uh, boom, uh, rooms booking similar to Hotel Tonight in the US. Uh, it, was, it went quite well. They got bought by Groupon like two months ago. And then somehow I landed in the UK. Uh, so I was introduced to Novoda. Uh, yeah, this is the queen falling into London. Uh, <coughs> so it was like a year and two months ago. Uh, and it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty great. So now this Saturday, I moved here with my girlfriend from London. So I'm permanently here in the Berlin office. Uh, and I have Volker, which is there, also working with us. And this is the team in London when we released a Tesco. Uh, Tesco is like a big retailer in, in the UK. So we released a tablet with them and the groceries app and things like that. Uh, but yeah, this is the story about Arte and how we decided to develop the app. So this is the concept that we started with. Uh, this was released last week. It's kind of buggy if you report all the bugs that you find because it's kind of be updated until the end of the year and then so forth. It will be more, but yeah, it's, an, it's tablet and it's uh, smartphone and tablet. It's pretty nice. Uh, but yeah, we s there was this moment that we thought we have a new project in the company. What do we do? Do we use Maven? Do you use Gradle? There was Android Studio was version 0.1. something, uh, and we decided, do we use it or are we not? And we said yes, let's try. But then we said, yeah, it's Gradle, it's Android, it's supposed to work. So Gradle was introduced in Google I/O last year, I guess. Um, it seems like the right way to go. So we said, let's go for it. And then we faced the first problem. So we all use Maven. We are really confident with it. You might like it, you may not. But then it works. And then you decide Gradle which has a completely different structure. And then you start thinking, why am I doing this? Should I be using Maven again? Why should we go back? But now we decided to stick with it, and there were so many changes that we need to make in how we were developing the apps. So the first of all was the project structure. So we had, this is how we do it. Uh, it may be pretty different way, way of doing it, but this is how we uh, structure our apps since we are using Gradle now. We have an app module, which is where we sit all the Android code for, for the app. Uh, it's just plain Android, everything is Android there. We have a core folder, which is just plain Java. Let's call HTTP request, JSON parsing, things that are just Java, with the idea that we want just to be unit tested. Just the folder, which is JUnit, plain JUnit, uh, which would be easier for us to introduce in, in the app module. 
Then we had to add the Google Play Services module because when we started, it was supposed to be used by uh, Gradle was supposed to support, so Google Play was supposed to support um, Gradle, but it didn't, so we had to just get the code, make a new module with the full Google Play Services code, and then through the settings file, just include that uh, module into, into the app. And then is the unit test, which I will show you later. It's just a module with all the tests, yeah, unit, row electric, and whatever you want to use um, related to, to the app. So this is how we structure the, the project from, from the beginning. And then we face the first problem is how do we test this? We are all used to work with unit testing, row electric. It's so nice when you open the IDE, you press the play on the test, and it just works. But this is not the case in Gradle. So we need to find a workaround of how we do it. How do we fix this thing? There are many problems. Paying, it's so slow. I was talking with Liggy time ago. It's like you're used to sit on the code. Maybe you're pair programming with someone. You just make some changes on the code. You press the play. The test run green. Make another change. Then you play the test again. It stays green. It's really fast. So it's really. Uh, really easy to change from one context to the other. Now it's different. Now we can run the test from the IDE, meaning you make a change in the code, you open the terminal, you gradle test, run all the tests, wait maybe two minutes until all the tests are finished, then you go back to the code. So this is what we what we faced in that in that time. Um, these are the four tests that we are using in, in Arte at the moment. Uh, it's slow, but it's everything is working. We find some kind of workarounds to make it work easier for us, or maybe more understandable for us. But this is the problem. Um, Carl, which is CTO of the company, he said, "Yeah, we want to run the unit test, and we want to run tests from the ID, but we can't." And we kind of reproduced it back, and we got the response that yes, we will fix it, but it will be a while. But on the meantime, you have to keep developing your app, right? So you need to find how can we fix it, how can we make it work. So we decided to create the Gradle Android test plugin. This is open source, so just feel free to use it. Uh, I can show you later if you want how, how it works. But the idea is, I think three months ago, uh, in Square, they released a plugin for testing to use of Electric. Uh, we tried to make our own too. It kind of didn't work out. Uh, and then we decided to go with this. The idea is to extend test not just to JUnit, so be able to use Scala, be able to use Groovy, be able to use more stuff to test in, in Android. Um, it's just a plugin, just apply your plugin in the code. And this is the build.gradle of the unit test model that I showed you before. Uh, oops, sorry. Yeah. So, yeah, this is how we we have the build dot gradle in the unit test module of 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 the project. Um. Yeah, we just what we're doing is from this module we're getting all the code from the app module, so we can test everything from there. But the problem was we can't have Android the plugin, the Android plugin, and the Java plugin in the same Gradle module. So if you wanted to have unit tests and RoboElectric from the same app module, we couldn't, that didn't work. So using this Gradle test plugin, we have a different module, we just Java, and then we get all the framework from Android. What we're doing here in this test class, what we're doing is we're getting the Android manifest to get access to all the activities and all the code from from the Android framework, and what we're doing is copying it to our, into our Java module. And then, since if you used Gradle before for testing, you see you don't have no results. By default, you just run test, you do something, just compiling, up to date, blah, 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 but you don't see any feedback on how the test, did my test fail? Did it not? Do I have a feedback on what's going on? So what we did is, in the after test, what we're doing is just printing a line for every test that it's being, uh, it's being tested, and then we just press the result. It's pretty similar to what you see in Maven when you just run the test, and you see the result there. So this is what we did. And then once all the tests are finished, we just open the, the HTML report for, for it. 
uh, unit test has an HTML report, so it's something that you can understand. I'm not really good reading XML, so when we try to do all this web electric and other tests, we just see an XML file. And then I know there's ways to yeah, can format that XML file, uh, but it's not, it should be easier to just run the test, see all the results, and that's it. And then the other problem we found is that uh, you can create, uh, so when you run all the tests on, on Gradle, uh, if you create different classes inside another class, we're finding that this is not a test, then it didn't work. So we had to find this not scan for classes that you see here, and everything that's finished with should, which is the, na the name convention that we're using for, for our test, if it has a name uh, should in, in, the, in the Java file or whatever and pattern matches your test classes, then it just don't check for that being a test, because Gradle checks for every, all the annotation being test, of course, um, and that those tests were being skipped because the, we, uh, we were getting different classes inside that different class. It's kind of weird, but yeah, we find this workaround. Uh, and now, yeah, that's, that's working. And then we have a different problem is we use Jenkins as a CI server. So we want to be able, once we build the app, we commit the code to GitHub, then GitHub triggers Jenkins, it builds the whole project, and we want Jenkins to be able to clean, like the typical Maven clean build in, in the project and then get the results in all the devices that we have attached to the CI server. It's, yeah, you can have a bash script on Jenkins that once it finishes, it gets ADB, make a loop for all the devices you have attached, whatever, but it's, it's not easy. So let's, let that, that Gradle is able to work this way. Let's make it easy. <coughs> so what we did is, there's an like Android command plugin. It's also open source, so you can go to the GitHub repo in, in Novoda, I will show you the links later. Um, the idea of this is once you apply this plugin, uh, you are able to run from Jenkins. You can make a task in Jenkins, say install, and the project will have a uh, task name install that you can use to install in the device that you want. Um, it's not ideal, but at least it's easier than just make bash scripts everywhere in your CI server after you build, um, yeah, after you build your, your code. Yeah, we'll show you the example later, which maybe it's easier for, for you to see it everywhere. But the idea is that, yes, we have this plugin to be able to make more um, easier the way that your CI server interacts with, with your app. But if you want to run, for example, Monkey in this case, you can have, we are using Maven to make it work in that way. But now, here in, with Gradle, we find out this way of, yes, we can make tasks from the CI server uh, make them work from, from the project. And then, yeah, we got mostly the testing covered, and now it's good things about Gradle that we are using in the app, which is called Flavors is the first one. We will say that, yes, we have four different flavors in the app. We have debug, of course, it's just for debugging purposes for us. We have beta release. Uh, this was intended for the new Google Play beta program that you have there, so you can have yeah, your production APK, and you have beta and alpha production APKs. Uh, then we have the other release version, release flavor, and then QA. Most all of them have different uh, different patterns and different uh, options that we apply. In this case, yeah, the debug we want to have the same the debug version of the app and the alpha version of the app installed at the same time in in the device. So what we do is just add a debug. You can use this package name suffix, so you can add dot .debug to your package name. So you have a uh, package name of your app, dot .debug, and then the name one without the debug name. Uh, so you have both version of the app installed in the same, in the same device. We run into a problem with it, with uh, since we're using providers and sync adapters. Uh, so content providers and sync adapters. You can have the same content provider in two so you can have the same content provider reference for two apps in the same device. You get this for, let's say, install certificate provider authority or something. So as Cyril Moutier wrote about it in a blog post, uh, so what we did is, since Gradle lets you merge re resources, and I will show you later in how, how that works, 
Um, you kind of have two different providers. So you have your debug folder, your release folder, and then you say here, by using this pack and suffix, and then throughout more configuration you can apply. Uh, you end up having the same content provider with different name, but the same code in, in, this, in, in both apps. It's kind of a workaround, but yeah, it, it worked, which is what we needed. And then, yes, you can here apply more stuff in, in, in the build types. Like, yeah, you can add program from here. So depending on the signing, uh, on the flavor that you're using, you can customize much more things. Um, and then this is the custom configuration you can apply. Here you can say for every flavor, we say we have different uh, variables. We have the sync, this case, what you see here is the sync frequency of the sync adapter that the RT app is running on the background. Uh, the debug version uses every 30 minutes. The production version is every two hours, I think. And then depending on more configuration, it just updates or not. You have yeah, the suggestion authority for the suggestion of the search, the version of the push server, the tag for log purposes, and then domains, GCM, stuff like this. So then when you customize all this, you can go on the code and you just use build config dot and the name of the variable that you used and you get access to it. So meaning this makes it easier, for example, if you have, for example, a free pay, a free app and a paid version, so a free version of the app and a paid version of the app. You may have different variables. Before you had to, yes, you had maybe two projects and then you were maintaining two projects which was the same code. Now with Gradle it's easier, so you just have uh, different folders for every flavor and then Gradle just merges everything for you. And using these custom config variables in, in the build.gradle files, you can also have yes, more access to different uh, possibilities of the app from, from the same code. So you know, it's not this duplicate code that you had before that doesn't work anymore. And then there's the other last step that we're using for well, is the signing process. You have to sign the app. And then I, when I was working on my own project, I had before two projects, the free version, or maybe the Lite, or maybe the paid. And you have, you were maintaining two struct, two code structures, two modules for everything. Now it's easier. We have, you can access to together and say we have different signing configs that you can see here. You can apply here the signing config, RT beta release or RT release. That means that when Gradle tries to build the release APK of of your version, you're going to go to this configuration and you'll be able to yeah, have different options according to it. Here we have, yes, these different, two different key stores in, in the modules. Uh, one is for beta releases and the other is for the production one. You can store your password here. There's two options to this. You can have this password and encryption in the build.gradle file. Uh, you don't want to expose it uh, in the in the field uh, build. What you can do is you can have your local properties file. You can access, you can put all the information there and that's local to your machine, which is, yeah, in our case we didn't need it, but yeah, it's something that you might think about. Um, so yeah, you can specify the code, the alias, the password and everything. And then just once you cradle, there's a command called cradle uh, assemble release, which just builds every, all the different APKs according to all the different flavors of, of the app. Um, comes here, gets all the password alias, and then just mails the APK for you. And then we have some issues. So the idea of a build system is to make it easier for you. No? You are used to use Maven or Ant or Scala, or whatever you're using to build your apps. But then, yeah, you want to not have to think about how the release process is or how testing should be work. I mean, you want to just develop your app, test it, make it stable, make it work. You don't have to be thinking of, yeah, how can I test this? Because now I can't. So this is all the testing, uh, so all the problems that we end up while, while developing the app is, yeah, testing is slow. So if you're used to run the test, make some changes, run the test again, it's green, you, say you follow, you make your change. Um, now it's really, really slow. In our case, we were working. I was working from from London, and then Frigger was working from uh, from Brussels. So the feedback was slow, 
but then if also the testing is slow, uh, it's kind of, yeah, it should be, should be easier for us as a developer to make these things work. There's no Google Play console, I'm missing the sentence, it's the integration. Uh, it would be nice if you can have a test, uh, a task ingredient that uploads the APK, so you don't have to go to the website, upload an APK, read all the permissions, say accept, it's slow. It should be an easy integration with, uh, with the Google Play, so you just could Gradle upload to Google Play or the name that you want, and it should do everything for you. Uh, another bad thing is almost the weekly updates. I'm sure using Android Studio and using Gradle, if you're doing it, you see that every week is something now. So maybe something is working today, tomorrow is not gonna work. Uh, I've spent two days trying to make Android Studio 0.2.1 I, it, it didn't work. It just, all the dependencies were broken. There was no testing working. Uh, then there was a new release of Gradle, 1.7. Now yeah, let's try it. Let's move to Gradle, 1.7. It should be better, no? But it's not, it was, it was worse because it didn't work. Then there was a new Canary version of Android Studio. Then you download Android Studio. Yes, it's really nice. I can see the strings on my layout XML files, but I can't even run the app. So. Why should, it's, it, it's good that they are working on, on, on this and sub, it seem to be really, really into it, but yeah, it should be easier to, to, for us to, to develop the apps. And then the resources merging. Uh, there was the first problem is the sync adapter and the Arthur provider. Everything which is declared in an XML file uh, is gonna give you a problem when you work with different flavors. So you have to find a workaround of make different sync adapters, different providers, different suggestion providers in different folders, and then when, when everything is merged, uh, it just doesn't work. And you can debug why that's not happening. So yeah, Gradle is groovy, it's really nice, but why can't I debug which is the resources that you're going to use? Why can't I do all these things? But there's no feedback for the developers saying, yeah, this is wrong. You say it's a big message that says failed. That's it, so you deal with it. But there are some advantages too. This, we started three and a half months ago, and yeah, last month it would be faster for us to work on it, I think. Then, yeah, it's supposed that it's not there yet, so it's gonna be difficult if you want to make your app fully, a production environment app working. It worked, but we did it, so it, everyone can do it. But yeah, it's, it's, it's maybe it's a pain, and it gives you a lot of headaches when you want to, to release your app. It's always good I have your weekly updates. So every day they are thinking about new stuff to do and every two weeks you have a release. Um, so hopefully by the end of the year it will be better. Maybe it's even worse, we don't know, but hopefully it will be better. Then flavors for me is something that was really, really nice for us. You don't have to maintain code in two different projects. If your app is really big, you have you can end up really crazy about it. Uh, so this is good, and it's a follow, it's fully customizable in the fact that yeah, you can have your build custom options on the file, and you access it from the code. It's, it's just easy for, for, the, for us. And then, yeah, this is, we tend to open source everything that we can. Everything that we use in, in the code is mostly open source, everything that we can. So the first, the first repo, uh, we had a workshop in London with the guys, Luke Daly was the great old guy in, in, in London. Uh, so we end up having this repo. Go it, uh, go for it, give it a try. What you can find here is issues that we find with Gradle. Uh, the guys of Gradle were looking into it, so you just raise a new issue and they will respond. Uh, it's kind of a easy and fast communication with them. So if you are using Gradle and you have any issues, just go to this repo, open a new issue, and, and they will reply. And this is the two, uh, the other ones that the GitHub address for, the Gradle test plugin and the command line plugin uh, that we develop, and yeah, feel free to use it, contribute, whatever you want, open issues. And this is, yeah, there was a guy who told me once, you have to always put a nice picture on a panda, in, in a presentation, the guy from Gago got had a, had a better than one than mine, but yeah, we have pandas. And the idea is, yeah, um, I'm saying this because I come from Spain and no one pairs there. 
I was using, as an Android developer, I was the only guy uh, developing for Android. And it's kind of hard if you are alone. You have the internet, it's really nice, but it's the f human feedback is also the best, the best way to go. So if you work in a company with more developers, uh, pair with them <coughs> as much as you can, learn from them as much as you can, it will be slower at the, end, at the beginning, but the long-term benefit is much, it's much bigger. Uh, and yeah, thank you for coming. Yeah, any questions? So then we have a lunch break, I guess. Um, I think there was a question there. Oh, okay.